Now let's continue with the treatment of ischemic stroke. And as we talked about in the previous video, our treatment is, uh, one of the treatments actually, is TPA, a clot-busting drug. And the road to getting here was not an easy one. It was filled with lots of studies in which clot-busting drugs were given to patients and they didn't do so well. And it wasn't until the 90s through the NINDS trial, N-I-N-D-S, showed that there was benefit in giving TPA to patients uh, with stroke within three hours. Now, there's a lot of controversy still to this day surrounding the use of this drug and even this trial. I'm not going to go over any of that. This has made it to the ASEP clinical policy, and some even call it a standard of care. And so we're just going to talk about the non-controversial stuff that's written, even though a lot of people disagree with it. So TPA was a drug that was dangerous, right? Because it would cause people to bleed in their heads. And so the NINS trial showed that if you gave it within three hours, then it could safely be given and the benefits outweighed the risks. And so we're really under time pressure here. We, we're, we're under, um, we're working against the clock. Actually, we're working against two clocks. The first clock here is that we want to give TPA within three hours of onset of symptoms. And the second clock here is that we want to give the TPA within one hour of the patient arriving to our emergency department. And so let's look in more detail at this one hour timeline, which we call the door to needle time. And so we want our door to needle time to be less than 60 minutes. And to make that happen, a lot of things, a lot of pieces have to fall into place. And there are actually guidelines that say that certain things have to happen within a certain amount of time. And so we'll go through each one of these very quickly. So at time zero, the patient pulls into your door at the emergency department, and that's when the clock starts. Within 10 minutes, this, you, the patient needs to be assessed by a doctor, and, uh, and labs need to be drawn. And the doctor is going to ask, when were you last normal, and do a stroke scale. And then, within 15 minutes, the, you want to make a call to the stroke team. The stroke team is going to involve, a, it's a multidisciplinary team. It involves pharmacists, neurologists, radiologists, everybody that's going to be involved to get this to happen quickly, within 60 minutes. And so, additionally, with, you know, you also got to get the patient to CT, and so you got to get them there within 25 minutes to get that patient's head CT done. And then you need to get those results back within 45 minutes. So that's the results of the CT as well as the results of the labs. And you need, to, and then the neurologist would be there, and, and, and preferably this is read by a neuroradiologist. You discuss the neurologist and the decision that is made to give the TPA. The pharmacist then has 15 minutes to mix up this drug and administer the bolus, to start the bolus. And that's how we get the door to needle in less than 60 minutes. Now I said a bolus. The dose for this drug is 0 0.9 milligrams per kilogram. And there is a limit for our heftier patients. Now this drug is given in two phases. The first 10% of the dose is given as the bolus and the next 90% is given over the next hour. And so this drug is given uh, in eligible patients. So, who is eligible to get this? Well, guess what? Dr. Lin has a pausus verbis card for the contraindications for thrombolytics. And so you want to go through this, and, and they're not really that outrageous, right? Anything that would put someone at risk for bleeding head would be a contraindication. So if they've had head trauma, if you think they have a subarachnoid, if they've had an arterial puncture in something you can't compress, previous head bleed, cancer in their head, or aneurysms, if they've had some spinal surgery, if their blood pressure is too high. And look at this number here. So if their blood pressure is greater than 185 systolic or greater than 110 diastolic, then you can't give it. We're going to come back to that. If they have any bleeding or if their platelets are low, if they had heparin, if their INR is too high, if they have any other sort of uh, clotting drugs that were given to them. 
if their blood glucose is too low or they have a multilobar infarct, so greater than one-third of the cerebral hemispheres. So if any of these things are present, then you cannot give the TPA. Now I said we're going to come back to that blood pressure. The first thing that you're going to remember as previously is that the brain auto-regulates and, and raises the blood pressure up high. And so, you know, that you, we don't want to lower this blood pressure too much. But if we want to give TPA, you have the opportunity. You can give a drug to bring this down just below these numbers. And some drugs that you might consider using include these easily titratable drugs like labetalol or nicardipine. If you've got to give one or two doses and it brings the, the pressure down, great. If it takes many doses or it's just tough bringing it down, then talk to a neurologist because maybe they are not a good candidate for TPA in that case because if their blood pressure rises again with the TPA on board, they are at risk for getting a head bleed. So you can see over here that this is for zero to three hours from symptom onset. Now, there was a subsequent trial in Europe called the ECAS-3, which looked at a longer time frame. It looked at 3 to 4.5 hours, and they found that it was safe and there was benefit. Well, let me just say the benefit outweighed the risks for uh, patients if they met these ex exclusion criteria plus the ones above. So, uh, if they're greater than 80, you don't want to do it. If they have a bad stroke scale, so stroke scale greater than 25, if they are just taking oral anticoagulants, it doesn't matter what their INR. If their INR is 1, if, if they're on Coumadin, still, you don't want to do it. And if they have history of diabetes and they've had a prior stroke in the past. So if they have any of these contraindications, then they're not going to get TPA in the 3 to 4.5 hour window. And here is another plug for Academic Life in Emergency Medicine. Great site. Go visit it and download this Pausus Verbis card from there for the contraindications to thrombolytics. Now, if you give thrombolytics, you cannot give any kind of anticoagulants or antiplatelet agents for the next 24 hours. Also, keep the blood sugar under control. Don't let them get any fevers because that has a, a bad outcome. They're going to need to go to a neuro floor or a neuro ICU where they have uh, experience taking care of these patients. Patients with strokes should get aspirin within 48 hours. So if they are not getting TPA, you could give them an aspirin in the emergency department. But if they are getting TPA, remember no antiplatelet agents for the next 24 hours after getting TPA. So giving TPA or um, recombinant tissue plasminogen activator is a complicated process, right? Look at all these things that you have to do. The dose is even complicated. All the things you have to do afterwards are complicated. And there's a gigantic list of contraindications as well. And that makes sense because this is a potentially dangerous drug if used in the wrong patient. You only want to use it in patients in whom the benefits outweigh the risks. And so, that covers our treatment of ischemic strokes with the drug tissue plasminogen activator. And we really stress these time constraints there. Okay, thank you for watching.